Greetings, my name is Ryan Nix. I'm a solutions architect with Amazon Web Services. I'd like to take a moment to talk to you about data fabrics. What is a data fabric in essence? Some of my customers are a little bit confused and think that a data fabric is a product or a solution, something that they can purchase or procure either from AWS or a vendor. And that is not entirely accurate. A data fabric is essentially a methodology or an approach to how you as a business manage your data. Many technologies, tools, products and services might fit under the hood. So let's take a moment and have a look at data fabric as a methodology, what its building blocks are, and then we can come back and have a look at which technologies, which tools might complement that methodology within the context of your business. First and foremost, data fabric, just a methodology or an approach to managing your data. The very first step of managing your data has to be, where is my data? Where is that data coming from? And how do I access that data? So when we talk about accessing the data, there's a couple of considerations over here. The modern day business doesn't have data coming in from a singular location, and we certainly don't have it in a singular format. So this could very likely be um, something like a relational database. This could be something like a uh, an on-premises SQL Server, this could be Microsoft SQL Server, this could be Postgres, um, this could be IBM's DB2, it could be any relational system. Uh, as such, that relational system could be a high volume transactional platform. Um, if you look at Amazon.com as an example, uh, tracking sales, it could be a more analytical sort of uh, sort of da database where I'm doing reporting and business intelligence on it. Very, very much a commonplace item relational databases. Uh, large scale entities, the, the types of customers I work with don't just have relational da databases, they are, are taking that data out of their relational systems and moving them into much larger data warehouse sort of platforms. Uh, predominantly for um, analytics uh, workloads running in those environments. Uh, even larger than that, I've got customers who are consolidating data from a variety of different locations and they're bringing those together in a data lake format and irrelevant of which technologies are underpinning this, we do need to acknowledge that there is a lot of different data sources coming from there. We, in a modern day context, don't just have data in databases. We also have sort of non-relational databases, no SQL environments. We've got queuing mechanisms that are, are storing data there. We've also got the third party SaaS applications where, where app customers have got hundreds of different applications that store data in their own right. And we're gonna pull information from those systems. Uh, off the top of my head, I'm thinking of things such as like um, Salesforce, as an example, CRM type solutions. So those SaaS solutions, uh, just SaaS applications, we'll list them there for a second. We need a platform, or we need a solution that can connect to these different sources, can authenticate to them, can interact with them. So my data fabric needs to take into account, you know, what are these different systems? How do I authenticate? How do I connect them? Where are they geographically? Uh, you also are going to have to have some way of aggregating this data and, and potentially visualizing it. So what we're going to do is we're going to add in a visualization layer over here. And under that visualization layer, a couple of things that we're going to worry about is how do I take my data and how do I 
aggregate that data? How do I take that data, combine it together, especially if it's coming from dissimilar sources, if it's coming from different geographies? Not a new concept. We're doing this for several decades now where we uh, s sell things in a regional context and bring them together for business intelligence or analytics. Also, wherever possible, how do we do this without a duplication of the data? How do I aggregate that data without copying it around, without re uh, duplicating it, and in so doing duplicate my storage requirement? If I have the ability to aggregate this layer in, in a virtualized context, that gives me a, a far better benefit in terms of cost and in some cases performance. Where that is not possible to just simply virtualize the data, I do need to end up moving data around and potentially restructuring that data uh, to some degree. So what about integration? And by integration, what I really want to focus on is integration with tools that allow me to extract, transform, and load my data. So how do I connect to my different data sources? How do I pull data out? So existing ETL solutions and even potentially API interactions when I'm coming to those SaaS solutions. How do I connect to those systems? How do I do transforms on them? And there are a myriad of technologies that could exist inside a customer base. Uh, that interacts with these different systems. And as I said, we'll take a step back in here a little bit later and have a look at what are the technologies under the hood here. So the, the next thing that my data fabric has to sort of cater for is life cycle management of my data. Not all of my data is going to live and breathe and sort of persist throughout the entire journey of my business. Some of that data is going to become outdated and stale and I might purge that information. Some of it might have a requirement where I keep it for a certain amount of time. So things that come into the picture here is who is able to access this information? What are they able to do with that information? How do I identify the quality of the information that I have here and how do I meet sort of compliances? So top of the list for me personally, what I look for in a data fabric is the idea of a, a governance type system. So if I look at governance or if I look at this from the point of view of privacy, I need a, a few elements here, first of which is a way of actively adding metadata to my data. How do I provide context to the data that I'm collecting? So active metadata over here, and under that active metadata, there's a few things that are really important. So uh, role-based access control, being able to define who is able to do what with that data. Uh, this again is not a new concept, it's going to tie into the authentication uh, mechanisms of where my data is coming from. Uh, if we are virtualizing the data, how do I abstract that data? How do I ensure that the correct people can see the correct data with the least privileged sort of mentality? Uh, again, linking into least privilege, do I have the ability to redact the data or reduce some of that information coming from there to only show people what is absolutely relevant to them? Uh, do I have the ability to mask that data? And, and this could be masking the data or presenting it in a slightly sanitized way for a business intelligence team or some sort of analytics team. That could even be something that I'm exposing to my external customer where I might be doing something as trivial as here is a price list that I put out into the market and then I sort of mask that and add in different customized pricing to different customers depending on who's looking at this data. The the data has context from a time frame perspective, so as my data goes through different stages of this life cycle, I might need to track how that data has changed or how that data has evolved. So a data lineage, so being able 
to track the lineage or the history of that data as it has gone through my life cycle. And then of course, if we're duplicating things, if we're pulling in things from different systems, how do I deal with contradictions in that data? How do I deal with AI sort of driven back clouds? How do I ensure that that data has the quality that I'm looking for. Uh, and this is everything from input errors to calculations, um, assumptions based on the data that I'm pulling through. So again, how does my life cycle management deal with those mechanisms? If I'm pulling data in, am I pulling it from an ETL platform? How do I make sure that every single record that is related to that data comes across uh, so that I don't lose elements of that information? From Again, in the context of a life cycle sort of management system, something I want to be aware of is compliance. And again, not something new, but super important here. And the customers I work with are not dealing with compliance in a singular region. I've got many customers who exist in, in the US. They, they have a presence in, say, EMEA or an APJ. So they have to deal with compliance in multiple regional contexts. I, I work with customers across multiple industries. So depending on which industry the customer is in, they might be subjected to specific compliances and regulatory concerns within their industry. So uh, off the top of my head, uh, CCPA comes to mind, uh, GDPR, uh, uh, HIPAA comes into the picture from a, a, a medical background. You might have something like FCRA requirements. If you go across to the APJ regions, uh, you might encounter IRAP. So my data fabric or how I interact with my data does need to make sure that I am conforming to all of these compliance mechanisms. What are all of the building blocks and do they all meet my compliance requirements? Bearing in mind that some of these are at a product or a technology perspective. And if you look at something like HIPAA, that's more of a business process sort of journey and is less about the tool or the technology that you are utilizing. My data fabric also needs to uh, deal with how do I take all of this information and how do I expose it to the correct people? How do I ensure that the correct stakeholders are seeing this information in a way that is relevant to them? So when we talk about exposing the data, most organizations will take that and expose it through some sort of enterprise search catalog, a platform where I can uh, have a portal entry and see that data, but also be able to search, find information that is relevant to me. So if I, I come over here, uh, some form of enterprise search catalog platform. And we've got a lot of different stakeholders coming into the picture here. I could, for example, have uh, very simply a, a group of people who are application owners. Uh, these could be uh, software development teams. These could actually be uh, owners of the application themselves. I could have an audience that is a business analyst team. And I could have uh, data scientists as a another stakeholder. Now, if I have a look at these different audiences, they could be coming in through very, very different entry points. Uh, they could be dealing with some sort of business intelligence platform. I could have, if I look at the business analytics and the data sciences audience, we could have some form of predictive uh, analytics. Uh, that could be a, uh, an AI ML sort of platform. depending on which sort of technologies are in, in play over here. Uh, likewise, we could see those data sources 
shared between different audiences. Irrespective of who the audience is and what sort of platforms they're catering into, uh, we need to be aware that the landscape of exposing data and interacting with data is, is incredibly broad and is constantly diversifying. So one of the things my data fabric needs to take into account is how does my data fabric deal with things such as open source solutions or, or new technologies that are emerging in the market? How do I adapt those very, very quickly? Across all of these solutions, one of the things that I, I want to focus on is, especially when we're moving into the AI side of things, how trustworthy is that AI? So I, I do need a platform that is trustworthy. I want to make sure that what I'm getting from my artificial intelligence is something that I can trust within my business. And a part of that trust comes from a, a rich set of tools that can hook into that and complement that. So if I look at the operational side of this, uh, my machine learning tools, uh, especially from an ops perspective, is something I want to consider. If, if I cannot operationally keep these platforms up and running, I, I can't rely on it. Another thing from a, a data fabric and being able to expose information to these different audiences is a, a need to be able to factor in how do I deal with bias? How do I make sure that the data that I'm representing is actually fair and that it is accurate to the different audiences? So if I, uh, let's just make that a, a note. And then finally, coming from these different sources after going through a sort of transformations, after going through an analysis, how can I explain the data that I'm seeing, the explainability of it. So coming back to the beginning, what is a data fabric? A data fabric, very simply, is a methodology that deals with how do I manage everything related to my data, all the way from where is my data coming from, what are the different sources, what are the different platforms I'm interacting with, how do I move that data around, how do I visualize that data? How do I deal with the life cycle of that within the context of my business, within the context of my regulatory and compliances? How do I deal with securities? And as the landscape and the technology changes, how does my data fabric update to deal with these new dynamics that relate to my data? Exposing the data, being very aware of the different audiences that I have, the technologies and tools that they're utilizing, and, and thinking about exposing that. And if I map out an effective data fabric or an effective methodology for dealing with my data, I then have the flexibility of deciding which tools am I going to utilize to build this out. And if I change to a new tool in the future because that is the latest thing for my business, as long as it still fits into my data fabric, I don't upheave everything in my business. This becomes a much more functional approach to the longevity of my data or the management of my information in my business. In a future session, we will dig into some of the technologies that you could find in the background of a data fabric. I hope that this has been helpful and thank you for joining me here today.